the Jet Airways saga has exposed the frailties of the Indian aviation market. Let's look at how the aviation market in India is as it stands. Aviation has been one of the standout sectors in India in the last 28 years, almost three decades. In fact, India is the fastest growing aviation market in the world. The Indian aviation market has grown more than 10% in each of these last four years. In financial year 2018 alone, India's passenger traffic grew more than 16%. Let, let me bring you some numbers to get a sense of what I'm talking about. A decade ago, in 2010, 79 million people traveled via flight in India. This includes domestic and international trips, 79 million. By 2017, that figure has doubled to 158 million. And by 2037, that's another 18 years, more than 52 crore Indians are expected to use a flight annually. That is the kind of growth we are talking about. Aviation is also a major job provider. 75 lakh people are employed through direct and indirect means in the sector. It contributes 30 billion US dollars to the national GDP. Nearly 90% of aviation traffic is domestic and low-cost carriers account for nearly 70% of domestic seats. Here's where the issue needs to be looked at seriously. Average domestic fares have fallen by more than 70% in the last 14 years. Capacity and low fares may be excellent for users, but aviation companies are bleeding. So who are the key players? Indigo and Jet Airlines until it started struggling to fly. Indigo's net profit plummeted, and listen to this, Indigo's profit fell nearly 97% in the last quarter of 2018. In the quarter that ended in December, Indigo posted better figures, but the fundamentals are weak. Even in the current financial year, this company has been hit hard. Reasons? Depreciation of the Indian rupee, high fuel prices, competitive fares. In simple words, Indigo is hit hard. But it cannot respond by hiking prices. It cannot charge you more because that will hurt the market share and passenger traffic. Jet Airways has defaulted on payments to banks and lessers. From the 119 aircraft it flew at the turn of the year, the fleet size has dwindled to 14. That's the total number of planes that Jet is flying right now, and that too is suspended now. Low-cost carrier SpiceJet is also not free of the burden hurting India's aviation. A report by Crystal shows that the company's liquidity will remain stretched. It has also downgraded the ratings for this airline. A spike in operating costs is hurting every aviation company in India. So what can the government do? A bailout looks like an attractive option, but it's not economically prudent. Experts say that if the government can lower import duties, that would help this sector. Now, two of India's airlines are ranked among the top 72 airlines in the world. Air India, which is the government-owned airline, it's struggling to divest for years now. And the second one is Jet Airways. Airline business is a risky one around the world. High capex, low profit margins, mostly render growth profitless. Fuel costs are dollar denominated, meaning that rupees weakness will hurt the sector. Government charges 14% excise duty on aviation turbine fuel, ATF, 14%. States add nearly 29% in sales tax. The current model is unsustainable. There's way too much tax. The sector needs more consolidation and policy support from the government. It's a mid-air crisis for the airlines in India. Fighting to keep prices higher in a bid to expand the passenger traffic is only turning the sector debt-ridden. The jet saga shows that if there is no prudence, the market tends to turn monopolistic, meaning it is controlled by a very few players. And that's not good news for the economy as well as the passenger in the long run. When a sector does not register profit, such a strategy would only lead to bad loans and insolvency and eventually job losses. It won't be electorally viable for any party. But what India's aviation sector needs right now is not a bailout, a policy change, a shift to cost efficiency. Doling out cheap air tickets may help airlines win passengers, but unsustainable pricing is only going to lead to defaults, and that's not good for the health of India's banks either, or the economy. That, in a nutshell, is the jet story and the story of Indian aviation. On Sunday, the leader went the extra mile, rather 400 feet below the surface of the ocean, to deliver a message. This issue is bigger than all of us. And we cannot wait for the next generation to solve it. We are running out of excuses 
to not take action and running out of time from this depth. I can see the incredible wildlife that needs our protection and the consequences of damaging this huge ecosystem that has existed for millennia. This is a historical moment for my country. Historic indeed and unprecedented. It was the first ever live underwater speech. The president sought to remind global powers that time is running out to save what he calls the beating blue heart of our planet. The heart of the matter, according to him, was the irony of how we have better maps of Mars than we do of the ocean's floor. We have managed to seriously impact this vast environment through climate change. Ocean acidification, overfishing, plastic, and other pollution, and other threats from this depth. I can see the incredible wildlife that needs our protection. The deep ocean is the beating heart of the planet. Yet, we have better maps of planet Mars than we do of the ocean floor. This needs to change as we gather the information available to identify priority areas for protection. The broadcast was part of a mission to explore and protect the Indian Ocean. The aim is to survey underwater life and map large areas of the sea floor with underwater drones. The mission's team was the first to explore these areas of great biodiversity. It was a desperate appeal from the president. Several small island nations like the Seychelles, in fact, face the most serious threat from climate change and rising sea levels. A decade ago, the lowest lying nation on earth, the Maldives, chose to drive home this point through an underwater cabinet meeting. Global powers have come together multiple times since then to discuss ways to save our oceans. But a lot of those pledges remain just those. Pledges, merely on paper. Currently, only 5% of the world's oceans are protected. With plastic pollution, one of the primary threats, an estimated 8 million tons of plastic wind up, winds up in the sea every year, severely endangering marine wildlife. With the help of the mission's findings, the Seychelles plans to protect nearly a third of its national waters by 2020, after protecting 80,000 square miles of the ocean in February last year. As they say, little drops of water make the mighty ocean. A plane so big, it has two cockpits, wingspan wider than a football field. I'm not kidding. The world's largest airplane is known as ROC, R-O-C. It successfully made its maiden flight this weekend in California, an aircraft with a very unique design. It has been built for a very specific purpose as well, a specific mission, to haul rockets in the air for launching satellites. Our next report brings you all the details about this flying behemoth. A giant aircraft with the world's longest wingspan made its maiden flight on Saturday from Mojave Air and Spaceport in California. Known as the ROC, the plane built by Stratolon Systems Corp flew over just two hours performing a series of basic maneuvers up to an altitude of 17,000 feet. The aircraft completed its first flight without any issues and landed safely. So what is so special about this plane? An aircraft with a very unique design was built for a very specific mission. To drop rockets and other space vehicles at an altitude of 35,000 feet. In simple terms, the Stratolaunch aircraft is a giant launch pad designed to fly satellite carrying rockets in the air. Once it is at 35,000 feet, the satellite bearing rocket will launch into the low earth orbit. Now let's tell you about the unique features of this flying behemoth. The Stratolaunch plane is a twin fuselage aircraft, meaning it has two separate cockpits and cabins. It has a wingspan of 385 feet or 117 meters, the longest in the world. The plane is 238 feet 
or 73 meters in length. It is powered by six Boeing 747 jetliner engines. It has a maximum takeoff weight of 650 tons, which is equivalent to roughly 6 lakh kilograms. Stradalon Systems Corp was started by the late Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen in 2011. Allen, who passed away in October last year, dreamt of having a plane that would make getting satellites and possibly even people into space more affordable and accessible. Saturday's flight was a huge achievement for Stratalon Systems. Paul Allen's sister Jory Allen said, and I quote, We all know Paul would have been proud to witness today's historic achievement. The aircraft is a remarkable engineering achievement and we congratulate everyone involved, unquote. With the success of the ROC's first flight, Stratolaunch Corp has said that it intends to launch its first rocket by 2020 at the earliest. Bureau Report, Beyond World is One.